This uh, guide is called the Type A Planning Guide. Now, it includes foods that are found in the basic four food groups because we are concerned about the total daily needs, and this is a part of it. We must serve one half pint of fresh fluid milk to provide calcium, riboflavin, uh, and the other nutrients that are needed for our children. For decades, the dairy industry and U.S. government have been saying that milk is good for our bones. While all whole foods contain calcium, an essential nutrient for bone health, it is argued that we need the higher amounts found in dairy. Children and aging women in particular have been singled out to drink more and more and more milk. What do you think the most important nutrient we get from dairy products is like milk? Calcium. 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 Or calcium. A calcium. The science in terms of dairy's role in, in healthy bones is pretty strong. And in fact, the National Osteoporosis Foundation, of course, utilizes that science in their recommendations. Osteoporosis is a degenerative bone disease, which has been widely linked to a lack of calcium. If this is true, nations with a high intake of dairy products, which are a major source of calcium in a westernized diet, should have low levels of osteoporosis. But according to a study done by a distinguished Harvard researcher, nations with high levels of calcium intake tend to have high levels of hip fractures, which is a key indicator for osteoporosis. And so, in fact, the higher the dairy consumption, the higher the rate of osteoporosis, exactly the opposite of what the dairy industry has been telling us for so long. One of the primary mechanisms for that is that animal protein tends to create an acid-like condition in the body called metabolic acidosis. To combat this condition, the body draws upon its most readily available acid buffer, namely calcium in our bones. As the calcium is extracted to neutralize the excess acid, our bones are weakened. In defending the health benefits of milk, many national health organizations now recommend that we consume low-fat dairy products. It can be milk, it can be yogurt, it can be cheese, it can be anything made from milk. But again, the important message, it's a message that comes from the American Dietetic Association, uh, the National Osteoporosis Foundation, cancer, heart, we're all in the same page. It needs to be low fat or fat free. So as the fat is taken out, the protein becomes a larger proportion of the total. So they become higher in protein, lower in fat. And when we compare these high-protein, low-fat milk products, for example, with prostate cancer, the relationship is as strong as it is for cigarette smoking and lung cancer. Most of these uh, animals here are what we call heifers. Uh-huh. Uh, they're the young females, not yet cows. So they haven't had not, their first calf yet. They haven't had their words. first calf. So they have to have their first calf before and they can once lactate. Once they come into lactation, they almost keep them these days, they keep them pregnant continuously exactly. for three or four years. Why are they eating grass now? Well, this is the last time in their lifetime they're going to see grass. After that, they're in the barn, they're standing there for the rest of their life. When I was young, we defended our product, promoted our product, because it was nature's most perfect food. And uh, so I believe that. But it took on a slightly different twist as time passed. I mean, it's the most perfect food for cats. And trying to switch the milk of one species to another species doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs>